All right, welcome back, folks. My name is Quentin Crisco. Find me on Twitter at BuckusStats, and we are here to talk about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We are scouting them before their Week Two matchup with my Chicago Bears, and we can start this with looking at the Bucks' defensive line, and that starts with Vita Vea, a big monstrous presence in the middle. Shaq Barrett is an outstanding edge rusher as well. They added. Defensive tackle, Kalijah Kansi in the first round this year. And Logan Hall was a, a pretty high pick a few years ago as well. Same with Joe Try and Troyanka. A lot of talent here. Some good depth with Yaya Diaby drafted this past year. Uh, Greg Gaines on the inside. Anthony Nelson's a solid player. Um, I, I think they have an advantage over the Bears offensive line here who looked a little shaky in week one. Moving over to the middle of the field, we're looking at running backs, tight ends, quarterbacks, linebackers, and safeties. The Bucks have a lot of talent here. The linebackers, very good group with Levante David and Devin White. Not a ton of depth behind them. Servosha Dennis is a rookie, but it's a little shaky behind them. As long as they're healthy, you're not too worried about it. Same with the safety position with Antoine Winfield Jr., an outstanding football player, and Ryan Neal, who's a really good football player in his own right now looking at the bears khalil herbert deontay foreman roshan johnson one of the deeper running back rooms in the nfl um justin fields i won't get too much into him hot topic i like him i love his athleticism i like what he has as a passer cole Komet, probably a little overpaid now with his new contract expansion extension but between him robert tanyan and mercedes lewis behind them the bears have a deep tight end room this one i want to say is pretty even but i'm gonna i'm gonna give it to the tampa Bay Bucks because they do have the blue chipper and Levante David and a couple guys who are close to blue chippers and Antoine Winfield and Devin White. And finally, looking at the vertical portions of the field. This is one where it's a little bit more questionable who has the advantage. Looking at the Bucks, Jamel Dean just got a brand new contract, a strong cornerback in the league, not not an all pro, not not one of the very best in the league but like that 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 second step below the very best he's he is a very good cornerback and Carlton Davis belongs in the same conversation being a very good corner now at nickel they play Antoine Winfield Jr. a lot in the nickel so Dee Delaney's not actually their typical nickel back but he's their cornerback three and again their depth behind the top two top three probably is kind of lacking there and we look at the Bears DJ Moore Darnell Mooney both guys, very good wide receivers. DJ Moore is probably the wide receiver one on the Bears, and Darnell Mooney is a strong wide receiver two on just about any team. Uh, Chase Claypool, a lot of questions after the effort that he put out last week, and I'm wondering if EQ St. Brown or Tyler Scott or even Valus Jones might be starting to steal some snaps from him this week. And now that we have looked at the rosters, let's go ahead and start diving into the tape. We're looking at the defense right now, and we're going to kick this thing off with the one thing Todd Bowles loves more than anything, blitzes. Todd Bowles is going to be bringing the heat, I assume, on Sunday. It seems like he's always bringing the heat. Felt like he blitzed on 40% of these plays for, against the Vikings. So let's go ahead and take a look. See a guy moving around all over the line, and then pause it here, draw it up for you. So watch, watch his get off, but number zero, I'm not sure who that is. I'm not sure if that's Shaq Barrett or someone else, but his get off is incredible right there. You got these three coming and then you're going to see this fellow drop back in coverage and Kirk Cousins actually is going to be running play action bootleg out this way. And you're going to see both of these guys just kind of creep it on down and they meet the bootleg right there. I can only assume we are going to see some variation of this blitz on Sunday. Um, just because the Bears like to run so many bootlegs, Justin Field is so dangerous on them. The best thing you can do, I, I would say, is meet him right when he's turning back around and looking at the field. Like have someone there ready to take him on. Just like that. All right, so on this one, we are going to see both these guys line up at the nickel coming for him. Number zero there, I don't think he's actually a cornerback, uh, but he's lined up out there. And he's coming, so that's what, six guys? Yeah, a six-man blitz. 
both both the, the furthest outside guys coming out of that nickel alignment at loaded up box. And they're just going to get him. Nice play by Kirk. So this is one thing that we need to see from Justin Fields doing. Like, so you see that pressure coming out of the nickel. You know that you got the receiver there. Is that Jefferson? I think that's, that's Jay Jettas. You know he's running a little out. You know it should be there because look at all that space. 35 left the area as a blitzer. So there's room. Boom. Quick decision. Quick release. Gets it out. Jefferson has a chance to get a few extra yards at the end. Well done. So on this one, you got five men on the line of scrimmage, but it's not the five you think that are coming. See the two guys in yellow? Those guys are dropping back into zones. And the rest of these guys, they're they're all coming. Whether it's the linebacker, the nickel corner there, and these three down linemen. They love to play games with these three down linemen here. They got Shaq Barrett and Vita Vea with uh, someone in between that might be Cansey. Um, but they, they love to play games with these guys on one side of the line. So watch out for that. See, they just get right in there. Like they, they love to create confusion like that. And I, I love watching watching blitzes like this. They're so fun. They're so cool. Like we well, got seven and 54, both faking in and then dropping back out to that middle area, hitting that receiver, taking them on. And you created a free rusher, even though you're playing five on five. Todd Bowles, so, uh, these blitz packages he comes up with are so cool and so fun to break down. You'll notice throughout this, we got a lot of nickel activity as rushers. So, one, two, three, four, five. They're going to be sending five guys at once a lot. So, again, Justin Fields needs to find vacated space and hit it. Um, on this one, Kirk just holds it too long. Like, you see over here, you got three on two, right? You have one, two, three on, or three on three, I guess, because of the safety. I didn't see him at first. So three on three still, like, and that's a lot of space. You got, what, 10? You got 20 yards between him and the safety, assuming that he can get a hat on him. He can get a hat on him. You got a lot of room to run. You just got to take that. You, you got to take that while you got it. Um, because, I mean, I only see one other route out here. I mean, one of these guys is probably peeling out, but, like, oh, man, I don't know why he didn't take that. He you, that's the toughest thing about Tampa's defense. You can't afford to hesitate because if you hesitate, you're sacked. And I, I really don't, don't think bootlegs are going to be the way to go for the Bears this week, which sucks because they kind of need them. But, like, Again, we're seeing the we're seeing a uh, what's that? Shaq Barrett coming through unblocked here. They have set this up to have a free man. I mean, you got double tight up there. You wish you could set something up with with the pass pro, but you also hate to lose a receiver. And he just comes here and just blows up the bootleg, destroys the play because of it. And you, you got both those tight ends on one guy. Like I mean, I I don't know. I mean, tight ends you might need two guys at once to block someone. And he's not even an honest rusher. Like, oh, I'm sorry. That was the nickel corner who came in. Excuse me. So you have the nickel corner coming on down. He's the one who blows this up. That makes more sense. Uh, I, I don't know why I thought Shaq Barrett was free there. But the nickel corner comes in. Oh, you need... This is the concern with Khalil Herbert in there, historically. I didn't catch his pass pro in week one, but this is what you really worry about. Like this play should be clear and the running back just can't can't get the protection down and it's destroyed. Pass protection from running backs matters. Now let's just take another, just all out, like bringing a safety and a linebacker. Um, one of the things that's really, really interesting as I dove into the numbers, the teams who scored more points on the Tampa defense, they actually, 
they did not consistently check down or run screens like you might logically think. They they get the ball out fast down the field. Like they are looking eight to twelve yards down the field, maybe, and however however much further you can go. Because really, you think about it, you can't play into Todd Bowles' hand, right? What does Todd Bowles expect you to do here? He expects you to take a sack. He expects you to force a ball into coverage or expects you to check down. So you need to do the one thing that's not there. Find the open guy downfield. Have a pretty good idea pre-snap who that might be. And that's where when you do that, you can you can prevent this. This right here. You can prevent the press coverage. Because then you're you're a threat down here. And there's no one in between there. Like, I mean, this safety's all the way at opposite hash. This guy is on an island. So, I mean, I'm not... If you get DJ Moore or Darnell Mooney in this spot, I am not... And you're you're seeing a loaded up front like this, I am not against just saying, hey, run a go route. You know, because you need to hurt them. You need to make them pay for bringing this much action at you. And that's the way you do it. And then you start doing that. If they want to blitz, this guy's giving more cushion. And then you get the underneath again. You get out to here again of the quick hitters. So I really hope we see the Bears force some action downfield if they see matchups like this. And this next one, you see a safety and a linebacker coming in. I think this is the last one I'm going to show you guys. Um, and Kirk Cousins hits that flat, hit, hits the, the easy route there, but... That doesn't really achieve you anything, right? You lost a yard. So let's see where they came from. He had the tight end. Doesn't look like that was his progression, though. I don't know. I feel like on this, because watch it, watch Kirk's head. I feel like Kirk just sees the blitzers and then says, okay, I'm going to hit that. I'm going to hit the flat then. But he might have missed. I have to be careful here. Because I'm not, I'm not good enough with my progressions from a quarterback standpoint to be sitting here and criticizing a guy like Kirk Cousins. But it looks like he'd have had him wide open. And I mean, you have a lurker here, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. They love to lurk, but I feel like there was something more there. All right, now we'll take a look at some of their coverage. Um, so on this first one, you just got just pay attention to number seven, Shaq Barrett. Um, they are going to be bringing. I think a linebacker or a nickel and Barrett gives a false step and then drops in the coverage uh, follows might be the fullback perfectly on the route and th they're going to do some creative stuff like this they're going to drop their edges they might drop a lineman here or there they're going to mess with you they're going to do what they need to to um, to cover guys up enough to let the blitz get home and their defensive backs love to bait throws like they, they will sit back and just wait for the route like something like that and you're gonna have him just trailing in coverage and you'll have this cornerback trailing a step behind in coverage and he comes diving down on the ball um he's just lurking you know he is staying just far enough that the quarterback thinks he can squeeze it in there and that's where it gets dangerous against this team because they can really fly downhill on the football and get those interceptions. So on this one, we're just watching Carlton Davis here. Um, I think this is this is Jefferson. So, I mean, it's not an easy standard to uphold to, but he did get Davis on the double move right there. That this little that that little out step right there took Davis put put him in the spin cycle. So just something to keep in the back of your mind. You know, you see a look like that, you might want to might want to consider running a double move on him if you think he got man coverage. Um, but it's also Justin Jefferson. There's not uh, not really a precedent for how good how good he is on any other NFL team's roster. Right here, we're gonna watch Jamel Dean. He just sticky man coverage. Um, you see, he looks like he's given inside leverage here. Excuse me. Looks like he's given inside leverage here, so he. He wants to force the action outside, but then as the play comes down, he, he comes and presses up 
just face up. So he's he's not really given leverage to either side at that point, and he just trails this route beautifully. Um, so you see the receiver switched there, but he he had, he follows this thing so so well, so fluid. Receiver just didn't have a chance. Outstanding coverage player, especially in the red zone. Now where the taking shots against the blitz matters, and you heard me say earlier to get that coverage to to back off. You look right here, right after the snap. You got 10 yards. You've got 12 yards. Do you think your guy can get five? Because this was a first or second down. Do you think your guy can get five yards off of that? I mean, you bet you I do. So, I mean, that's that's where taking the shots against the blitzes really matters. Because it's what's going to give you these opportunities right here. You can't just take those if they're not there. Because you're going to get negative one, negative two yards. And then another one where we're looking at Jamel Dean. This is one where there might be some opportunity. So you see he's playing outside leverage. So that means his, his inside foot is like towards the receiver's outside or further outside of it. So he's he's saying, you're not going here. You have to go this way, which just gives the receiver, you know, a bit of an advantage to if he's running an interior route, he doesn't have to fight through a guy. Um, and that's what happens so or i was looking at the wrong receiver but so you'll see right here might give a little push off little uh little handsy up there but he is too so that's fine you know as, as long as it, it's even both sides and then you'll see him just separate he had that inside leverage and he just creates a mile of separation there so that's something to pay attention to if you're a bears receiver getting getting that outside leverage against uh against jamel dean you might be able to create that little separation at, at the stem of the route like that. Now we're on to the fun. Let's get fun. 50. Number 50. Vita Vea. This dude is a hoss. I'm just going to let this roll. Just keep an eye on number 50. Like, you shouldn't be this big, this fast, this strong combined. He is just, he is a brick house. He can shoot gaps. He should, you don't find nose tackles who can shoot gaps like this often. He is a, a monster. He stuffs up the run. He gets it more in pass rush than you would expect. Like, and watch this. Watch this speed. Downfield. He ain't getting no loafs today. That was, like, you don't see nose tackles making that play. From where it's caught, here's our guy right here. You don't see nose tackles doing this very often. I mean, I, Vita Vea is awesome, guys. And I am a little scared for him playing against the Bears offense. But we will, I'm hopeful. I am optimistic that it will go well because they, they need it to. This one, he just, he is going to just open a lane as wide as a bus right here for the linebackers to come in and clean up. Like, it's just, this is the stuff that doesn't end up on the stat sheet, but it's just what you want out of a nose tackle, and he gives you more than that. Like, look at that. Just clears it up for three defenders. And this one, this this snap, this uh, rep is all about the get off. I mean, this guard's pulling, so he gets a clean lane, but you're not supposed to be able to jump this lane that quickly, and he does. Guy's an absolute monster. You need to know where he is on the line and have a plan. Watch this again from the other view. Because he can wreck your game plan. Last guy we're going to talk about here. Last guy we're going to talk about here. Is linebacker Devin White. Right here. This guy might be one of the most vicious tacklers in the NFL. He's, he's known for having some busts here and there. Um some assignment soundness issues but he's violent man and with his athleticism i wouldn't be shocked if he's spying fields at times and i am nervous if he is getting clean hits on fields because just watch the way he's bringing guys down watch the the way he's he's ringing them around with all his body weight like he is just his tackling is violent it's mean it looks like it hurts number 45 right in the middle there 
This is our guy. And he's just he's just gonna bring some hurt. Like watch this this ring around action. Slams him down. I mean, I don't want Justin Fields taking those hits. I believe Justin Fields has a bright future. So Justin Fields, please get down if Devin White is in your purview. And that's all I got for you guys. I'm going to let this keep rolling while you watch Devin White decapitate people. Um, my name is Quentin Crisco. Find me on Twitter at Buckistats. Ooh. And check out my work at ONTAP Sportsnet, Bears Podcast, Bears on Tap, and, and everything NFL. Mostly gambling, mostly football, mostly college football, mostly NFL, mostly a lot of things. It's all football related. Check that out, Shaving Points Podcast. Appreciate you guys for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, and let me know what you think. I appreciate it. Have a good one.